everyone. We're really excited uh, this weekend. I was lucky enough to host one of the most wonderful athletes that I have been working with for three seasons. This will be our yeah. third season. Third season. So I met Andrea um, as a Training Peaks athlete who lived it in LA at the time and right. has had some wonderful adventures. So I thought it'd be sort of fun to learn more about for you all to learn more about Andrea and sort of her journey and where she's going and really exciting season this year. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your background and what you did growing up, which I think really um, has a part in you yeah, as a right. triathlete right. and where you grew up and how you ended up in LA. Yeah. So I'm Andrea. I grew up in Germany, Southern Germany, Stuttgart. Um, as a kid, I used to do a lot of figure skating for, I think, 12 years. It was almost every day. Wow. Um, figure skating on the ice rink, of course. Um, I did a, a lot of ballet on the side because it just belongs together, kind of. And I used to play tennis and I'm a huge skiing enthusiast. So um, I started skiing when I was three years old. So this is... I'm a very outdoorsy person. So with uh, figure skating, did you compete? Or? Yeah, yeah. I competed on national and international level. Wow. Um, as a single skater, I did pretty bad, <laughs> I have to admit. <laughs> I was lucky enough um, to find a group and do um, synchronized skating uh, in oh, Stuttgart. Wow. Um, how many people was that or how did that work? It's 20 people oh, my doing goodness. the same stuff at the same time synchronized yeah that and makes triathlon almost seem easy <laughs> well but it's like the programs are just like two to three minutes okay it's like long program is four to five so it's not much of an endurance it's more being precise and which really goes with your personality well i think yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah so um how did you well how did you end up in la i think your background is really cool Thank you. Um, yeah, I used to be a um, surgery resident in Germany um, and then I got this great opportunity to do some research in the United States um, as I was working in a university hospital. Um, research should always be like a big part of work, um, but it's hard to fit it in like with a clinical schedule yeah. and doing especially basic science just takes up a long, a lot of time just because you have to be in the lab take yeah. care of everything anyway so they um, sent me to LA um, for one year and then I was lucky enough to get another year financed by a grant a German grant um, so yeah finally two years in LA Wow. Right. so how did you get into triathlon or decide that that was something you wanted to do um, I think the harder I work the more I need something else that is also big on the side so to counterbalance exactly that's really interesting so um when i was graduating in med school i was just looking for a new challenge because obviously graduating wasn't challenge enough <laughs> <laughs> um so i started doing sprint triathlons and i wanted to go for the olympic distance i never dared doing so because of the swim <laughs> so this is how it started. And then I moved to LA two years later. I hadn't worked out at all while I was in surgery, just because surgery. So I moved to LA, had a lot more free time. Um, and so I started cycling again, um, which I really, really love. As I'm an outdoorsy person, and LA is just the, probably the best place to go cycling. You got it all. You got the mountains, um, you got the ocean. So when you're descending from any any canyon, you can just look down on the ocean and you're in heaven. Um, yeah, and then I wanted, I don't know, it's a weird story, but I wanted to like get to a point where I'm physically that destroyed that it changes my mental state somehow. So I was looking for something new, some new challenge to get me to that point. Yeah. And this is how it all started, doing Ironman. And sort of... Exactly. Snowball uphill. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, uh, and that was such a treat for me being, you know, I 
learn to ride in LA and everything. So um, to see your rides and right. all those classic canyons right. and stuff was right. just, just so fun. Um, yeah, so then swimming. I So Andrea didn't, um, my favorite story was opening up. <laughs> I'm so happy you're bringing up the story. <laughs> I love it though. Yeah. Um, we did some when I first started coaching her years back. Um, put in some baseline swims to see where she was. Mm -hmm. and I opened it up, and it was these times that, like, four minutes for a hundred or something, and I was just sort of thinking, "Wow, <laughs> I'm not sure where we're gonna start on this." And then realized she was at Culver City Pool, which yes. I swim at, which is a 50 meter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so she was um, just like most things, just doing it very well and swimming 200s for hundreds. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And, um, we dropped your times in half overnight. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Biggest achievement so far. <laughs> um, yeah, but that was had to be fantastic swimming outside. Absolutely. I love those tan lines on my back. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Counter yeah. does the cycling ones. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah. and your swimming has um, your ability to hit that front quadrant swim is very cool. And so we were really, it was very fun to be able to get in the pool this weekend while she was here mm -hmm. and get some swim video and have a whole new list of things to do right yeah yeah she loves workouts and drills are just amazing I really have to say yeah really she, helpful yeah the way Sheila has just reinvented mm -hmm. how to learn to swim and yeah. I think that was I'm really excited to show Sheila some of your work versus you know you learn to swim with just her written work right and right. the feedback and, and things that you know everything that goes through so um I know that I can have done it as an athlete. To be quite honest, <laughs> I think that you've really done well with that. So it's been fun. Well, I have to admit, I had like some little background. So where you caught me, I could just recall what a friend of mine who was an Olympic swimmer had told me once. So it all came a little bit little together. together. Like, yeah, exactly. It wasn't like the first time I was exposed to technique, only the first time that I really tried to follow it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you were you you were actually swimming versus semi athletes when they get into right. a triathlon who have been marathon runners or something right. or something right. who mm -hmm. really just doggy paddle yeah. across for right. survival. Right. Kind of. <laughs> but still, really really good improvements. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your season last year. You had a yeah, I did two races, two half. And she always one. picks these really flat, boring races. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right um so my first race was challenge um Heilbronn, which is a half ironman distance kind of race and um, it's a very beautiful landscape and where it's, is it at um southern germany close to my parents place okay so i basically came back home for racing which was kind of nice my family was there um, and it was the swim was kind of easy because it was in the, like a side branch of a river um, very slow river, so easy to go. Um, but the bike was very hilly and very windy. Um, <laughs> and I was just, I kept Christine's word in, words in mind to not go all out, to just keep it simple and to keep track of all the numbers passing me because I might pass them back on the run. So I did that. And you did that. And I did that. I, I fell back on the bike though a lot like I think 15 places or some, something I lost along the way. Um, but yeah, I kept the numbers in my mind and it was true. Um, yeah, I followed them up. Yeah, and it was fun to look back on that race. I think your VI was 1.03. Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. So you really stayed true to that power plan. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then your next race? That was Challenge Iceland. Um, also, I have Ironman. Um, very rough conditions, but one of the like loveliest races you can do. I can on, only recommend doing it um, if you can stand the cold. Yeah. Um, so the swim had to be shortened from 1.5k to 1k just because it was so cold and it was really, really windy. I had like real waves going on in a lake, so really choppy swim. 
Well, and hearing the stories from Katrina and you both mm-hmm. of how cold that water was. Yeah. Do you know what temperature it was? I think it was something around 10 degrees Celsius. Yeah. 10, 11, something like that. It was pretty cold. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, and just how people are stumbling. And mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But the good thing is, like, going with this entire excitement, I probably wouldn't have been able to swim there just on a regular day. I needed yeah. that adrenaline to keep me going. Yeah. <laughs> and then your bike? Yeah, my bike. So I took it a little, I rode a little less conservative than I did the first time, just because I always had the feeling, well, I'm pretty, like, my ego is pretty big in cycling, so I wanted to take it out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. It was still a very hilly course um, and really windy. I saw grown men being blown off the street. Yeah. So a lot of crashes. I'm really happy I just made it. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the most painful bike ride I think I've ever done just because it was so it was so intense yeah. and nerve wracking. Well, and you had to be still cold. Yeah, I put a jacket on. Yeah. 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 You had to, right? And Absolutely. Was, yeah. <laughs> with that wind. Exactly. And then you yeah. run? Yeah, then again the run was really cool because it was cool. So like it was the first run where you didn't have to worry about temperature, not about getting dehydrated or anything. It was just perfect temperature to run. And the first so it was two loops of 10K. The first 10K loop, I just flew away basically. Went really easy, but I paid for it. <laughs> the second loop, I hardly made it to the finish line. Like I had cramps going on and yeah, I felt really bad at the end. <laughs> but you look at that run file, you managed to hold on to the pace. Yeah, somehow it was sheer will because I had like I had never had such cramps before in a race. Like my hamstrings were all Yeah. <laughs> but how did you place? Oh yeah, I placed second in my age group. Which out is... of seven though. <laughs> but... <laughs> hey, you take you gotta yeah. take it. Second is second. Right? Yeah, right. I was happy to receive like To be on the podium. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and the podium is seventy point three. Exactly. Yeah. It's a big uh, notch on the buckle. Yeah. Feels good. Yeah. And then this season, super excited for. Yeah. I do have a place for Roth. So. So for on this side of the pond, Roth probably mm-hmm. isn't as is, uh, is well known, maybe, yeah. as in Europe. Yeah. Roth is one of the most iconic and original Ironman races from way back in the day. It's definitely known as the fastest and flattest. And mm-hmm. isn't there like uh, almost a million spectators out on the yeah, course or something? Yeah, I think, like, I looked um, it up on Wikipedia. It has the most spectators of all the Ironman distance races, even more than Kona, just because it's so accessible, I think. Yeah, it's not, like, and it's, it's a startling number. I can't remember what it is, but it's almost unbelievable until you see the video. Of the race. Yeah. Right. And then, especially on that one climb, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's people yeah. 20 deep on the climb. Right. So that has to be going through your mind. And yeah. Just how excited. I'm, I'm really excited. Plus, it's a race in Germany again. And I've got great friends and family who already promised to support me. So oh, yeah. this is going to be great. Yeah. And then how about your warm-up 70.3? Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> southern Spain, Marbella. I was hoping for nice climate, like <laughs> southern Spain in April, that should be just great. And some great food afterwards. What I didn't consider is that it's a very hilly region down there, so it's going to be another 4,000 feet of elevation. Every game. time we look up to like start planning for race, I'm like, well, Andrea, like, pick a flat race. Did you see the climbs on this? These races you're picking. I really didn't want to do this this time. I, really, I was really looking for a nice race. <laughs> really <laughs> but you know what i think that'll make roth your first flat race yeah, like you race boulder not... like all these yeah, right right <laughs> right yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh that's so exciting so it was so fun to come and sort of get your plan more mm-hmm. focused yeah. and um figure out after running biking and swimming and seeing our wonderful pt Shilpi. great yeah getting absolutely. some great input from her and um swim video what we can uh, work on to keep it rolling.
Yeah, absolutely. It is so much fun racing with you, I have to say. I never thought I would like I would be able to enjoy a half Ironman. Yeah. But I really love it and I love working with you. Aww, and these days were amazing. Oh, they really <laughs> were amazing, weren't they? Well, and especially what was so fun is that like it like I didn't like we just knew each other from the get go, right. even though we'd never met. No, right. <laughs> right. So, um yeah, it's just what I love about you as an athlete is you can just take information and simulate it and then just do it. And uh with from power to swim to mm -hmm. everything, your ability to just focus in and yeah, with power it took me a while. I remember your words when you said, <laughs> "Well, I, we really need to get the roadie out of you, <laughs> <laughs> shake yeah. it out." Yeah, exactly. Quit riding with all those yeah. roadies. Yes, <laughs> you're a triathlete. You're <laughs> not a roadie. You're not a roadie. You cannot do this on a race day, and you did yeah. it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. But it was definitely different. I think getting the power was just yeah such. A big that was key. That was key. Mm, yeah, I think because so. I you just you just can't understand it. No, exactly. That's visualize true. it and um, and even with power, I would say it takes a while to really get into it and understand what you're doing. And I think that was a really nice progression to you know have a whole year with power before right. you get to Ironman. Right, absolutely. And now absolutely. even you just nail power, so right. we just it's, absolutely you know it's just getting getting into Ironman. Yeah, so great. Well, safe travels back to Thank Germany, you. and I can't wait to see you again. And Thank next you. season, we have to race together. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks, guys. Uh, it was so fun to learn and meet Andrea in real person. Yeah. And I knew you guys would uh, all enjoy that, too. So, thanks.